Welcome, this is the Startup Cowboy Channel where we talk about all things hats, horses, Western culture, hopefully some things that you've never heard about or been inquisitive of. Um, we'll cover it here and hopefully educate you that way. So if you're interested in videos that we do or have looked at our channel before, please subscribe. You can also like this video and turn on the notifications so that when we come out with a new video, you're alerted to it. So today we're going to um, shape a felt hat that's already been shaped. We're just doing a tune up on it. And, um, you know, we're going to be assuming that your hat's been in storage, storage well. And so it's not going to be super wrong, um, but hopefully we'll just show you a few tips and tricks to get it ready to go for this year's felt season. So we're going to put some water in this brand new Jiffy steamer that I got for Christmas. Thank you to the wife. You've seen me shape a million like this at home. So if you have this, you're not too far behind. You can certainly do this same job with that. But I'm going to go put some water in this and then we'll get started. So just like any other video that we've had, we always clean the hat first, whether it's a straw or a felt. We have videos for those. We might link some of those in this video, um, one or the other. If you're looking for one, certainly Google it. You will find it. Cleaning it makes it so that when we add heat and steam, none of that dirt, oil, and grease, or maybe just less of it, will get driven down further into the fiber. So for a straw, because it's weaved together, it's covered in a petroleum-based lacquer, it's not gonna take in as much, but you certainly wanna get off as much as you can. Um, like I said, you can watch the video on that. However, just as a simple basic term, you could use any type of wet wipe, um, Clorox wipe, something like that. I've actually heard of people using Windex, which I use Windex for everything. So we might try that in one of our videos. I bet that works perfect. Um, so you would do that and then go ahead and go for it. These ones specifically sitting here are geared towards a felt. So I'm gonna grab a felt right here. Now, if you're tuning up a hat that's very different than kind of redoing a hat where you would be attacking dirt and grease from a very you know intense level this hat is an older hat i would not call it far gone when it comes to cleanliness but i'm not going to try to deep clean it because some of those oil stains some of that dirt is kind of set in there like i said before if you don't do that before you drive the dirt and the grime further in. So um, I'm going to do a basic kind of tidying and cleaning with this and explain, you know, each one of these tools that I would use for it. So the first thing that I do, and I, uh, you know, depends, depends on the hat too, is decide, you know, where it's dirty, how it's dirty. Is it dirt or is it grease? Now grease is gross to talk about, but the reality is you sweat in a hat. If you don't believe that, you'll see a lot of people with sweat stains right around where your head is at. You'll also see finger stains and ear stains so i'm going to show you on this hat there's two dots right there i don't know if the camera's going to pick that up well i can hold it up a little bit better that is literally from the sweat coming off of my ears that's gross back here you'll see this that's just evaporated um basically sweat as well so those are the areas that you'll look at if it's dirt it usually looks like dirt now that sounds too obvious for sure, but when there's grease, it attracts and holds dirt. So you're gonna have kind of a combo of both. So that leads me to, you know, which tool I use first. So this here, there's probably a real name for this. This is just called a, a hat foam brush. It's not really foam material. It's kind of a plastic, kind of sharp plastic. It, you know, doesn't hurt if I rub it, maybe if I do a little more. And what it does is it actually shaves or cuts off pieces of the felt so you could go overboard and cut lots of pieces of the felt off why would you want to do that well the felt itself if it's holding grease that means that the grease is you know basically caking down what is a fluffy texture of felt even though it may not look fluffy especially if that's a nicer quality hat that's been sanded it's just caked on real tight down you know on the felt so you'll want to you know attempt to pull some of that grease out by shaving it off with this now we're going to make a video of how to get these pesky stains out because you can have a really nice hat that has stains and you just feel like man let's just throw that in the trash don't do that there's ways to get i would say 85 percent of that out some of that is just going to be there forever so that's shaving it with this now if i'm just attacking dirt or dust i will use a brush and the basic premise there is just like anything else you're going to want to get that off before you put heat, you know, emulating the same way that, you know, heat's coming off your body and, and sweat and driving it into the fibers of the hat. So what I do first, before I do anything as far as abrasive, is I, I try to take dirt off. And then if I don't get it off, I try to extract it or shave it off with this. 
the the real trouble with one of these is if you don't know what you're doing, whether you're going the wrong direction or too much of it, you will take significant parts of a hat off and you don't get those back. And some of these felt like if you were to, you know, price per ounce that, that might be $20, $30 that you accidentally just onto the ground. So I try to be careful with that. So the first thing I'll do is take a brush. You'll see here I have two different colors of brushes. If you have a black hat, a gray hat, a chocolate colored hat, you will want to use a dark brush. There's no real, you know, it's not like the dark one's going to do anything. But what will happen is this tiny little fibers off of your hat will get lodged inside of this brush. And if I were to take this brush and go to a light colored hat, it's going to actually implant those onto your hat. They don't stay there forever. Sometimes they do, especially if the dye of your hat is pretty fresh, like a brand new hat. You could take this brush, put it on the hat that I am wearing, and in some ways ruin it. So if you can't remember to see that that is dark, write dark, or don't put this on a white colored hat. Remember that. Have two different brushes. So I basically, anything that's light colored, I use my light colored brush. Anything that's dark colored, I use my dark colored brush. If you pay a lot of money for a hat, maybe just have a specific brush for that hat. These two brushes I also got as a gift from Greeley Hatworks. Not from them. These were bought there, but I got them as a gift. That's a great place if you're looking to buy a hat. Um, we had a fun experience there. We're going to post some videos about that experience. I was um, fortunate to get a custom hat built there. That's not coming for a few months. We'll probably tag you guys along on that journey just so you can see that. But Greeley Hatworks great local place here in the um, mountain western states to get hat products. So that's where I got these. So then the last thing, and this is totally more on a reconstructive level. We did a video about how to stretch hats. I usually, when I'm shaping a hat, when I'm doing a tune-up, I'm going to put it on my head and check and see, does it fit well? Does it not? That's when I would use this stretcher. Once again, if you need a detailed, um, instructional how to use that go ahead and do that just a pointer if you're not going to go click on that video this has a smaller size disc on one side so this is that side and a bigger size just make sure they're lined up when you put it into your hat you're going to want the bigger end sticking out it's going to be pretty simple if you flip flop that you're actually going to do some really goofy things to your hat. It's not going to ruin it, but the product that you're going to get from that stretch is not going to be consistent. So those are the tools that I use for a simple clean. There's other products that I'll use as well. The, that would, you know, basically go from a simple clean to a more in-depth one. Some of those might be dry shampoo. Some of that might be um, baby powder. So um, if that's confusing to you, certainly we're going to make a video about that. But I'm not saying you need all of this, but it's handy to have it. So this hat... I know that those grease stains are kind of stuck in there, so I'm just going to brush it for now. I can hear that my steamer is getting close, so I know we're ready. You probably can't see, but this hat was cleaned, like, honestly, not that long ago, and it is throwing off dirt. Now, we did a video of how to store these hats. This hat was stored exactly how I said to st store them, on top of a straw. So some of this could be, you know, on there from the last few times that I wore it. As I've said before, we live in a very dusty, windy gross place sometimes the air so it could be that it also could be um, just dust from that closet so get as much of that off as you can um, I'm doing this without explaining too much because we've made videos of this but there is a direction that this felt is kind of it's called the nap of the felt and so the way I remember the nap of the felt is when I hold it on top I say the word counter clockwise so from the top of the hat that means I need to go counter and when I flip it over, it means clockwise. So think of that, counter, clockwise, top to bottom. Those are the things that make me remember that. If you were to brush it backwards, you're not going to ruin your hat. You will actually just take all of that dirt and push it down in there. It's basically, you know, you have one way that you like to comb over your hair. It's the same way for this. So just clean the top as best you can. I like to go on the crown, get as much of that off, work down to you know, the break here between the brim and the crown really focus a lot on getting all of that dirt that stuck around that sweat or uh, your hat band and then start going for all of that. You see all that coming off? I don't know if you can. It's kind of disgusting when I think about it. And just keep going. You honestly can't do this enough if you do this the correct direction. When you feel like you've done it enough, you'll flip it over. So now we've gone counter. Now we're going clockwise. Pretty simple. You learn it at a young age. Can't do this enough if you do it right. 
Once again, this is making sure that we're not putting more dirt deep within the fibers of this hat. Now I'm listening to this steamer right now and I'm hearing it bubble and it's on standby. Like I said before, it's got off standby and steam. It has an indicator light and I'm betting it might be on. Ho oh, ho, looky there, I win. So I'm gonna turn it to steam because it's ready to go and we're gonna start working on this hat. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about some things that you might look for when you are touching up your felt. You know, what's worth putting steam on, what's not worth putting steam on, what fixes are realistic and what ones aren't. So in some other videos, if you have major flaws in your hat, whether it's been stepped on, it's been pushed over, um, it's been stored incorrectly, you might have to go to the rebuild phase where you stick a balloon in the crown and fix the crown. You know, if a crown is, you know, significantly smashed. When it comes to, you know, what's, what's worth it, what's not, if it's structurally incorrect, maybe you're gonna iron the crown. Like I said before, put a balloon inside. Think about it from a, is it that big of a deal or is it not? This one, we're just gonna call not that big of a deal. So when I look at one, I look at, you know, the overall, you know, 50 foot view. Is there something glaring to me when I hold this hat out? If I were to, you know, ride by, someone would see that and say, holy smokes, that guy getting a bear fight. Those are the things that you're gonna work on first. After that, you can get pickier. The problem is when you get picky, you cannot be perfect. And so you might oversteam a hat and do things to it that you necessarily did not intend to do. Don't be that person. Get the big picture stuff first and then work on it later. So for this hat here, there's some kind of bubbles and some incorrectness in the front here. The sides look okay to me, but the back also looks, you know, it's kind of got what I call a bacon look. It's not a consistent flow across there. So when I'm touching up a hat that is structurally correct for the most part, I'm going to try to work on multiple sides at a time. And the reason for that is if I get really nitpicky about this corner and I work hard and I work hard, as soon as I go somewhere else in this hat, that might undo what I am doing. So the, the quicker you realize that when you're working on a part of a hat, another part of the hat has to move, you'll get really good at symmetry. So I'm going to work on the back first and just try to get it symmetrical. Maybe it's not quite the look I want. I just want to be consistent across the back. So when I shape, I know that wherever I put this heat, the hat is going to wilt towards the heat. So when I, and obviously gravity is going to play a huge factor. So if I want this hat over time to continue to kind of stay upright or flat versus drooping, um, like if you were to honestly get a downpour, stand in the shower and have a hat completely wilt. So this would be wilting. And if that's your look, great. I want to try to concentrate my heat on this side so it's always going to be wanting to work up so that's just something to remember that's not to say i don't ever put heat on the bottom um, it's just rare and i'll kind of show you at the end actually why i would so i'm going to heat basically this whole section of the hat so the back like two-thirds of this hat now as we go to the steamer if you do get too close you can burn a hat i've heard people say that either i'm a chicken or that's not true because i've never burnt a hat Maybe a few a few straws. I've gotten a little hot in a few spots, so keep that in mind. I, as a rule of thumb, if my hand is hot, the felt is hot, so that's a good indicator of how close you can be. And I just like to keep my felt moving, and especially this first time before you've introduced any heat, I kind of stay on this heat for a while. There's pros and cons to getting your felt plenty soft, or not shaping it. You know or shaping it with some, with some uh, structure still in it. If I'm trying to get really good symmetry on something, I might not get it as hot as something that I'm trying to really fix. That way the whole hat kind of pulls together. If I get one specific spot of this hat really hot, it'll probably just move right there, which sometimes that's what you're looking for. I want symmetry, which means lots of the hat looking the same together. So I'm gonna call that plenty warm. I was probably three to four inches away the whole time. It's hard to see that. And then I'm going to go down to my table and push this down nice and flat and try not to come up here in the front and do anything. I'm just trying to get a nice consistent look and I'm just pushing my pointer finger and my middle finger down on that edge. That's basically where I'm trying to get it straight. Assuming that between the edge and here doesn't have any big bubbles, I would use my thumbs to try to fix that. But I'm going to continue to do this motion until I feel this felt cool down. Okay. And you can put your hands flat. If you don't trust yourself, just sit there. That's fine too. I like to make sure it's all working itself down. So what that's going to do 
is flatten that whole section out. Now, if I turn around to the front, that kind of made the front look all kinds of crazy as well. So I'm going to now try to make the front really even. Basically, you're going to do a teeter-totter with your hat over and over until you can balance out what you are affecting on the back, excuse me, and what you're affecting in the front. So this is where, as an artist, it's really hard to let a hat be what it is and not get too worried about perfection. Um, so if you're a newbie, let the hat shape itself. Don't try to do something the hat doesn't want to do. It's a good rule of thumb in life. Don't force too many things. So once this feels pretty warm to me, once again, I'm going to go down, try to use the pointer finger and my middle finger just right there on that bounded edge. If I feel like it needs some something you know flattened out here, I can. Now notice this is going to undo some of the dip that this hat has. We'll put that back in there. The one place you don't see me pushing down on is the corners that we established in this hat because I felt like they were in the right spot. I don't need to undo those. Um, you certainly can if there's something wrong. So to me, this is pretty boxy. It's pretty flat across the back. It's pretty flat across the front. It certainly looks more symmetrical to me, um, but that's not the look that I'm going to go for. So I want this back to have a little bit more of this U shape, not taco, but U. And I want this front to appear to be nice and square, but not too tipped up. So I'm going to work on the back first, and then I'm going to talk about a few of the illusions that you can put in the front of a hat to kind of give it a couple different looks. On a brand new hat, um, you can really make a lot of magic happen. These older ones are going to kind of have this patinaed look no matter what you do when it comes to how squared off they look, how rounded off they look. So all I'm going to do to do that is set it down on the crown, and I'm just going to take both hands and slowly push this like that. Now, if I go too much, it's going to really want to stay there. Once again, I'm going to kind of do this slowly until I feel this felt cool down. Okay, And then I'm going to pick it up, put my hand in the middle, and I'm going to show you what I'm looking at right there. So if I felt like I went too far, there's a couple things I could do. While it's still warm, I could go back to the board, push it flat, or I could do this right here. I'm just going to take my hand and pull down just a skosh. And that's going to hopefully release that tension. So now this front to me looks too square. Um, so what I'm going to do, and this is like I talked about how to fix the illusion. So in my opinion, a hat has two dips if you're going to put a dip in it. It has a breakover dip right here, which in our straw videos we'll show you. Um, and then it has another dip right at the very front where the edge is. Okay. So to get you know the, the overall Western look that we're going for, almost every hat has some kind of breakover. And this is where I will, because I want this hat to want to stay in that breakover, I will put the heat on the bottom side. So to do that breakover, you have to you know, determine how far back you want it, how much you want. I'm just going to keep standard with the one that's here. So put my middle finger where that's at, put my thumbs where the corners are, and just slowly and evenly press down. I'm just going to sit there and hold that until it cools. Now this is where the illusions work. If I want this to look very square, straight across, the George Strait look, the Western look that you think about in your brain. I'm going to, while it's still warm and I feel like that's correct, take this, put it down, and run my fingers. Don't push on the hat, just run my fingers and make sure it looks nice and flat. Okay, so that's going to make these corners look more stark and dramatic um, versus this hat that I'm wearing, where like there's still a corner, but it's very soft. The way that you soften a corner now, so if, if you're looking at that and it looks too straight across, to you or too stark, the, there's a couple ways to do that. You can either make straight front of this dip down a little bit, which will make this corner look softer, or you can soften the corner. So I'm going to dip this one first, and then I'll show you how to soften the corner. So I'm going to dip it down. So if I want it to go down, I'm going to put the steam on the bottom. And I'm going to make sure this is plenty warm. When I'm doing these symmetrical things, usually I don't go as hot because I want everybody to move together and not just a specific spot. So I'm going to take this hat and instead of going like this, I'm going to hold it on my chest. You can do it there too. And just put my thumbs in the middle and work them out. Thumbs in the middle, work them out. And I'm just trying to put the middle of this a little bit lower than that. These are all the decisions you have to make when you're tuning up a hat. If you just wear the same hat style forever and ever and ever. It will actually tune itself with age. So now 
that looks less stark on the sides and more tipped down in the middle. So I'm going to soften the corners. I'm a soft corner guy because I'm very, very particular about um, symmetry. And believe it or not, a way to get away from having to be perfect with symmetry is just to soften the style of your hat. So softer corners are harder to just, you know, to, to de determine, excuse me, goodness, um, if they are symmetrical or not. That's why flat hats are so popular in my opinion. They look good all the time because they look so symmetrical because it, honestly, it's just a big circle. So you can soften the corner like I did before. I just kind of run my hands past those corners. Check it out. Darn, that looks good. So once I've been messing with that front for a long time, I can go back to the back and fix that. Okay, so you can kind of flip flop, flip flop. When I feel like it's pretty close, before I start getting really particular, I just shut my steamer off, put it on my head, walk around, then go and check it. So at that point in time, usually your crown is not screwed up if it's just been in storage. So this would be the time once you have your brim where you want it, you can choose another crown style. If you think this year, this year I want to kind of maybe try this, or last year that wasn't fitting so good. Maybe you could change that. In some other videos, we'll show you how to take, you know, a typical cattleman, turn it into this, take an open crown, turn it into something else. You have basically any option that you could possibly want. I'm kind of sick and tired of this free facial that I'm getting here. But I guess that's a dual purpose of that. So that's just kind of a simple way to tune up a hat. Definitely think about when you're shaping the front, you're also shaping the back. So make sure that whatever you do, you know that you're um, affecting both. Take it easy on those old hats. Make sure they're clean first and uh, you should have a good time. So this is just a simple video that we put together for you guys. Be looking for some more and uh, new exciting stuff here on the channel. Thanks.